want to partake into that. And we pray that these prayers should even take us to higher heights. If they should catapult us, they should be catalysts to take up to higher heights in whatever we shall be doing after this, dear God. We have asked for all this as we go on today, guide us and guide us in every other day as we gather here in this platform. We ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, we are most appreciative uh, tonight uh, to be gathered once again together as we uh, as we say, so much, uh, thank you so much, Mommy, uh, for the prayer and for the lead uh, during this prayer. Thank you. We bless God for, for that. Now, everyone is welcome, and we kindly welcome uh, those uh, that are coming from the different prayer gates, those that are coming from the different prayer slots, and those that are coming from the different uh, domains also of uh, practical reconstruction. May God uh, Almighty be glorified uh, through the work of your hands and the work of your faith, uh, even as you labor in the different uh, marketplaces and different fields. Um, without uh, any further ado, uh, we are going to kindly uh, proceed in this evening, picking on from uh, where we left things in the, in the morning. Uh, God richly bless you. Uh, God richly bless you. Um, God richly, God richly bless you. The book of uh, Psalms uh, chapter 87, um, we, we read a portion of it. We were reading uh, and then on verse five, it goes on to speak about Zion where it says, and of Zion it will be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself shall establish her. Uh, the Lord will record when he registers the peoples. Uh, this one was born there. Then it says, uh, it says, yes, Selah, which is uh, meditate on these things, ponder on over these things. Then on verse seven, it says, both the singers and the players on instruments, uh, they say, all my springs are in you. All my springs are in you. Now, this particular uh, place in uh, the seventh verse of um, Psalm chapter 87. It is very fascinating because I can connect it to John 14, um, whereby Jesus Christ speaks in John 14 and he says to the disciples, let not your hearts be troubled uh, because in my father's house, there are so many rooms. And then he says, so uh, I go to prepare for you. There are so many rooms I go to prepare for you, which means I'm opening the way. Um, I'm opening the way into all the various rooms that are located in my father's house. So um, Jesus is telling the disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. And these disciples, why were their hearts troubled? And what is Jesus talking about? Why are their hearts troubled? 
and why are their hearts threatened with trouble? These disciples are coming from very different backgrounds. Um, the, the first team of those disciples, some of them, they were formerly taxpayers, which means they were civil servants. And some of them, uh, some of the disciples were, apart from the taxpayers formerly, some were fishermen, others were, uh, were sons of business people. Um, I remember the day that uh, John and James as brothers, when they were called to follow Jesus, they were in a boat where they were fishing with hired servants under their father. So their father was a businessman in the fishing and fisheries um, and, uh, you know, uh, maritime industries and they were in business and so the, the, these people were coming from different backgrounds all of them they forsook what they were doing they are now carrying this cross they are following jesus and many of them were still youth many of them were still youth the one who is recorded to have been married by the time uh, he engaged in the discipleship process. We have a record of Peter. We don't have a record of the others uh, and so forth, uh, the details. But we know a lot of them were still youth. They were still very young. Jesus himself was 30 years old when he started ministry. So um, by their nature, these, uh, these people, young people, uh, at the beginning, by their nature, they are looking at the future. They are looking at careers. They are looking at uh, uh, the, the vocations which the, their own uh, families, their own parents were looking forward to and all those kinds of things. And so one time I remember Jesus uh, is asked a question by Peter and Peter says to Jesus, what about us who left all and we followed you? What shall we get? And then uh, Jesus answers and he says, Verily I say to you, there is no one who left uh, mother, and left father, left brothers and sisters, left children and left whatsoever, um, and followed me and for my sake and for the sake of the gospel that person shall receive a hundredfold in this life um, and together also uh, with the persecutions regardless of persecutions and also eternal life so jesus does not skirt around these issues of the benefits the impact and the uh, the promise of the kingdom. What is the promise of the kingdom? And uh, these are issues because when we are talking about reconstruction, uh, the young people, the old people, the women, they are standing right now in 2022. They are standing in the valley of decision. They are standing at a place where if they are not going to follow Christ, they are going to follow devils. If they are not going to follow, and if the kingdom of God, if the church of Jesus Christ has no accommodation for them, if it has no plan, if it has no purpose for them, we will lose them. We will lose the women. We will lose the men. Many fathers are under tremendous pressure as basic and primary providers and breadwinners to their families. And many of the other uh, uh, career-oriented uh, and career-prepared people, they're under tremendous pressure. Um, the cost of living is ballooning like nobody's business and everybody's blaming uh, the, the Ukraine war 
including even the guys that are increasing the price of bottled water. They are blaming Ukraine war and Russia and, and NATO and all those kinds of things. So there is a madness that is in the world. Now, so young people, they would like to find out. Uh, business people, they would like to find out. Politicians, uh, those that are in political office and are pursuing governance, they want to find out. We, when we follow Christ, when we follow this gospel of the kingdom, what shall we get? What is the future? What is the future like? The other day, I was having a conversation with a man uh, who was, uh, he was really like, uh, like Naman in my country, in my home country, Zimbabwe. He was like Naman, uh, although he was not necessarily in the armed forces, but he was a great leader in the political and governance sector. He had something like three, four portfolios. The founding president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, had given him so many appointments and he was wielding power. And as I was con in conversation with him, representing the church and pushing for uh, righteous uh, policies and decisions by government in the country of Zimbabwe, and he, I was sitting there and this man was sitting there and two of us were, were speaking. That was just before he was to go to a meeting, the top decision-making meeting of the top body of the ruling party, which was ruling the country. And they are going to make decisions about the future of the country. And I am speaking and I'm bringing about what needs to be done in the nation to resolve issues so that the decision that they may go and make, they will be under counsel and they'll be guided accordingly. And then he asked me a question and he said, he said, okay, I know you represent uh, God and you represent the church, uh, but then uh, when I look at uh, countries, he told me about Islam, told me about Christianity, told me about uh, Judaism in Israel. He told me about uh, Hinduism in India and uh, subsequent civilizations that were built through faith or by the influence of those different uh, streams of faith and uh, religion, whatever you want to call it. Then he said to me, uh, so he says, I'm struggling. He says, I am struggling because I know you want, you want all of us, including myself here, you want us, you want all of us to follow the way of God in Christ prescribed by your faith and prescribed by the Bible. But can you show me the evidence? Because we are troubled. At that time, government was under extreme pressure. There was shortage of fuel, uh, sh subsequently shortage of transport, subsequently everything was uh, going upside down. And these, uh, and these were looking for solutions. Um, um, yes, I, I, I will always keep on, um, and my co-hosts also will always keep on assisting to mute the mics uh, uh, for the sake of kids that might be in the background in different uh, households that are on the program on Facebook, on Zoom and so forth. Now, so he said, we are in trouble and we are under pressure because day in, day out, we have different groups uh, wanting us to follow their way and their uh, system. So what does your faith offer to Zimbabwe? What does your faith offer? What does your God offer? Because we are dealing with real issues. We have fuel shortage. We have transport shortages. Um, we have got schools um, running short of books and uh, teachers are not well paid. 
they want more incomes, civil servants, they want more better remuneration and so forth. We are dealing with the unemployed people, we are dealing with rural people, was announcing throwing statistics in the sky and so forth. And so, so I had to go, uh, I had to go layer by layer, blow by blow, and uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, describing the blueprints of God for all the issues that were on the table and all the various issues that were contentious. And then he said to me, if what you are talking, if the church was doing that, then surely this nation would not have been where we are. We would have been in a better place. It reminded me of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, the founding father of the country of India, which today um, it is governed by a, a party which is a, 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 you know, a, a, a Hindustan uh, you know, party which gave the country the language called the, you know, Hindi, uh, coming from Hindu and Hinduism. Um, and uh, then they named the country India. Now, Mahatma Gandhi spoke and he said, you know what, I love the teachings of Christ. He was Hindu himself. He says, I love the teachings of Christ. And I would have been a disciple of Christ if there were no Christians, if there were no Christians, because I, the teachings of Christ and the direction of Christians, these things are going in different directions. So these Christians are the ones that pushed me away from being a disciple of Christ. So people in the nations, they are anxious. They are looking for solutions. Look, that's why sometimes God is very patient. Some, I, I discovered it. He is very patient even with sinners because um, he knows that many of them, they are looking, they are looking for, for answers. It's like the woman at the well of Samaria. She was changing husbands like pairs of shoes, changing men like pairs of shoes and so forth. And, and life was going on. She was frustrated in life and she's looking for answers. She's looking for solutions. She's looking for um, a panacea. She's looking for the ultimate answer to the issues that she's facing. And so, and she met until she met Jesus. And Jesus broke through and that woman became an evangelist. She went into the city of Samaria and began to call everyone. And she began to show them the light. These things, small things that I'm talking about, they begin to indicate to us that we cannot continue with the church in its fallen state, in its feeble and inaccurate state, we are called by God as custodians to fix this once and for all in the whole world and for the sake of the whole world. But thanks be to God that the blueprints are there. The blueprints are there, prophet after prophet in the Bible, uh, book after book, chapter after chapter, verse after verse, from Genesis to Revelation. We are provided with a different focus a different model of what the kingdom of God and the people that know God are supposed to focus on and what character they are supposed to be uh, from generation to generation. Because we are shown also how this is a seamless, non-broken and unbroken continuum of a journey from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. So we are at a certain point in this journey right now. We are at a certain point and we are required as per Acts chapter 17 from verse 25 to 27, we are required in our generation to seek the Lord and to find him because God has set boundaries, boundaries in terms of times and seasons 
chronos time, kairos time, physical boundaries as well, geographical boundaries, he has set boundaries so that, and, and he has given us habitations for us to dwell in so that in our time, in our generation, we might seek the Lord and that we might find him and that we might do his will in our time. So we are at this time where we were left dumped by COVID, we were left dumped by the 2008 global financial and economic recession. We were left dumped somewhere on our own, left dumped now again by the Ukraine war. And all of these crises are coming and they are finding us uh, snared, hidden in holes for a prey and uh, we need reconstruction. We need restoration as per Isaiah 42 verse 22. Now, so therefore this mandate is very critical and very urgent. Uh, it has come upon us. This is why you find even in the early church, when Jesus was now answering these issues, he had to take some people, some of them, they came out of the traditional orthodox temple which was existing but we, it had it, it had uh, you see uh, ceased to be a place of god's power and a place of god's truth it had become a den of robbers jesus said my my house is written that it's supposed to be a house of prayer for all nations and prayer in that sense i have explained it uh, in the beginning of this 70 day series, prayer is much more than just only talking words. Fasting is much more than just only denying ourselves food, although uh, the temperance and self control, uh, control of gluttony and overeating, all these things are part of fasting, but it's much more than that. It, it's, it's much more than that, according to Isaiah 58, from verse 6 to 12. The template of godly fasting, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's prescribed there. We've taught about it. That's why those who joined us in the middle, you have to go to the archives of some of our teachings. And that's why some of these things will be reproduced into manuals, modules, books, and booklets to teach nations. So we must do these things, but there is much more. Uh, so Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Young people, let's not your, let not your hearts be troubled. Because what I called you for is greater than what you were doing. What, I, what God truly has called us for is greater than whatsoever you could have been doing without God. It's greater. I called you to actually do it more accurately. I remember when God took me, uh, when he called me and he was speaking to me in various seasons, but a, a particular time I remember, I was arguing with God. I was, you know, amongst the very nice uh, uh, government uh, uh, functionaries, officials and civil servants in the country of Zimbabwe. And I was discussing with God, I said, what are you talking about? He's talking to me. And then he showed me very clearly that I'm not kicking you, I'm not kicking you out of government, but I'm kicking you out of doing government without God. I'm just kicking you out of that. And I'm kicking you into, I'm deploying you into doing government with God. The kingdom of God, the government shall be upon his shoulder. The kingdom shall be upon his shoulder and he shall order it with righteousness and justice upon the throne of David um, and uh, the zeal of the Lord shall perform this. And so my folder, government folder, as I was sitting down in that visitation, as I sat down on my chair in government, the folder changed and it just changed and it became a Bible. And I was in government, but the Bible was now my tool, my instrument. So God, I started to realize that God is not, is not chucking me out of government. He's not chucking me out of uh, governance. He's not chucking me into some spooky uh, religion somewhere. 
He's not chucking me into a, 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 a monastery and I'm going to be there like a monk somewhere. No, he's not chucking me into that. God is calling me into a more perfect way of governance, a more perfect way of administering the kingdom in all the domains of life. So I began to realize that. And then I began to say, okay, so good, of God, it's much bigger. Let not my heart be troubled. I started to realize that my heart should not be troubled because God is taking me into a greater pedestal. Um, he is, he, you know, he, whereas when I was and I would be in government without God, I would be sitting there waiting for maybe IMF, World Bank, International Finance Corporation, waiting for World Trade Organization to fix something or the United Nations. But this government of God, the kingdom of God, the principle is laid out in, 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 in uh, Luke 17, verses 20 uh, to 22. It, the kingdom does not come with observation. Solutions for Africa do not come with uh, some observation from IMF or World Bank or such other in some other place. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within you. That's why we have to empower people. We have to produce a different DNA of people out of Africa and out of the churches and out of communities world over. The kingdom is within you. The relationship between God and every individual must be very strong. The, 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 the dominion of the principles and the spirit of God must be resident in the persons and in the people, in the multitudes. Every man, every woman shall sit under his own fig tree and under his, under his own vine and no one shall make them afraid. So there is no monopoly about God. Of course, there, is, there are ranks, there are offices, there are responsibilities, there are different uh, places of deployment and different measures of, of, of glory. Uh, it's, it's clarified all of it, even in 1 Corinthians 15. But every part is important and every part must be activated and empowered. So we cannot sit there and keep on complaining about banks. The empowerment banks, the banks that can empower projects that will build Africa. The banks are within us. The solutions are within us. So we must uh, become empowered. So Jesus says to the disciples, let not your hearts be troubled because some of you were busy, you know, upcoming entrepreneurs and business people. You were in the fishing industry with your father. And uh, I haven't called you here to start languishing in poverty and so forth. I haven't called you here to become now um, some useless mystics somewhere here. No, I've called you for a higher, a higher order. I've called you for a more excellent ministry. You are going to teach, you are going to do things. You are Whereas you were simply running your private limited business of yourself and your father, me, myself and I, and then we eat and die. But this time around, uh, you will make disciples of all nations. You will you will teach the, you will teach them whatsoever I have commanded you. You will take my business principles, my economic principles, to multitudes. Just at the church in Jerusalem, when three thousand came to the Lord, and then five thousand were also added on the other day, and then many others were added daily in the church at Jerusalem. An economic system was then rolled out and no one was lacking amongst them. No one, was, there was no unemployment. All this unemployment in Africa is artificial. It's, 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 it's artificial, it's not authentic, it's not, uh, it's not the destiny of Africa. Men from the British House of Lords came into Africa in the 1800s, just on a tour and passing through the report that he gave, it's in the public domain, spoke about how people were royal, spoke about how um, the mindset of the people they were not as backward as today's Africans. Um, you know, they were, they, were, they were royal. They had 
some dominion and they were self-respecting. And he says, no one is, is unemployed among them. No one is homeless amongst them. So this whole thing, my, my own grandfather, my own grandfather, uh, he used to, he, with his friends, they, he, he died three months after I was born, but I've got evidence in the village, evidence of how uh, empowered those ancient people were, so empowered. They knew what gold is, they knew what copper is. They were doing mining, iron, iron ore, they were mining those things. And they were, they were smelters, <laughs> they were processing, they were industrialists, they were manufacturing uh, their implements and tools and equipment and machinery. They were manufacturing even weapons for self-defense as communities. They were exporting to China, they were exporting to India. Those that understand the history of uh, the great Zimbabwe ruins, the Kami ruins and uh, the other ruins in Central Africa, right up to Sudan, the cities that were all over Africa, they are, they are mind boggling. If you would build just a village, which looks like the ancient cities of Africa before um, the uh, mental and political barbarism started coming into the continent, you will be amazed to see the technology, the architecture. Think about the pyramids of Egypt. People are still studying. We have professors today, professors of Egyptology, trying, just trying to understand the intelligence, trying to understand the intelligence of the people that were around. So we are coming from a, a, a place where God was doing something and he was going somewhere with people. And uh, where we are now totally is somewhere that is veered off course and we need complete overhaul and reconstruction. So we are given the script and the prescriptions by the model now of Zion. The model of Zion becomes universal. It's not just for Africans. It's not just for uh, Jewish people. It's not just for um, some other quarter somewhere. And by the way, I told people in Uganda, you see, African people don't be told lies. Don't be told that uh, Jesus and uh, whatever the word of God uh, and uh, the, 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 you know, every script, don't be told that these things are for white people. What we, our forefathers, our forefathers worshipped the God of Abraham before Europeans worshipped him. Yes, it's there. In, not just in, in, it's not just in church history. It's in uh, human history. Human history, simple, generic human history, chronological history. Our forefathers, yes, the, that is why Abraham married an African. Moses married an Ethiopian woman. It was ourselves trading with the civilization of God and civilization of the, of the, of the commonwealth um, of the peculiar people that God was already raising back then. Joseph, where did Joseph govern? It was here in Africa. Joseph governed in Africa. He didn't govern in Canada. No, he didn't govern in Australia. He was governing right here in Africa. Long ago in Genesis, Genesis 41 to 50, Joseph was governing in Africa. So uh, the first church to be opened in Europe was opened in, uh, in Acts chapter 16 at Philippi in Europe, Acts chapter 15. Lo but Africans were present in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Africans from Egypt, Africa people, including some Jews that were in the dispersion, in the diaspora, from Libya, from it, they were present on the day of Pentecost. Philip, the evangelist, when he meets the eunuch of Candace, the treasurer of Ethiopia, the finance minister of the whole uh, empire of Ethiopia, uh, the empire of Ethiopia under Candace. So this treasurer, this finance minister was coming from Jerusalem. The Bible says coming from Jerusalem to worship. 
Now, what manner of worship was this finance minister coming from Jerusalem to do? He was coming from Jerusalem to worship because this was a continuum from the Old Testament relationships. You know, long ago, the days of Solomon, the biggest of the offerings that came to honor God, Jehovah, the creator of heaven and earth, after the when the temple was built in Jerusalem, it's testified, First Kings chapter 10, the largest of the offerings never seen and ever seen again came from Africa with uh, the queen of Sheba arrived with the longest and biggest escort and entourage comprising of gold, silver, spices, and so forth. This poverty that I see in African townships today and African villages and the landscapes, it's imported, it's artificial, it has no jurisdiction, it has no uh, dominion that can last and these things must be broken. And so who is the answer? And by how uh, and by what system shall God do these things? This is where the scripture is answering us tonight just before I hand over for us to be taken into the appropriate prayer points. This is where, therefore, uh, the scripture is, uh, is laboring to tell us, it's laboring to instruct us right here to say uh, concerning, concerning the answer, how, how, who shall do the reconstruction? Which people shall, do we have to hire United Nations Development Program or United Nations uh, High Commissioner for Refugees and so forth? No, the Bible says, uh, uh, on, on you know, Psalms 87, on, on verse 5, it says, Concerning Zion, it shall be said, This one and that one were born in her. Uh, they are unique. This one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself shall establish her. Uh, I want to uh, demand that we must expect to be established by the Lord. We must expect, you see, our gospel must come from the Lord and from the Lamb of God. It must, it must be beyond denomination. We need to see God. We need to break beyond the veil, break beyond the heavens, and connect to Christ, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah that has prevailed. The Most High himself shall establish it. I want to see churches of God, churches established in Christ, uh, entrepreneurs coming from uh, the house of God, strong, established in Christ, managers, the Lord will record. This is uh, according to verse six, the Lord will record. When he registers the peoples, he will record to say, this one was born there. Meditate over these things. There will be a uniqueness. Daniel, it was recorded that this one is royal. And both the singers and the players of instruments uh, shall say, and they shall be in it, and they shall say, all my springs are in you. So there is nothing that lacks, and there is nothing that must be in short supply in the kingdom of God. Uh, you see, science is located, it's there. We are the best of the scientists must come out of, uh, and must be born there. Uh, the best of the teachers must be found and born there. The best of the managers, the best of the commanders of the armed forces must be found there. There's no contradiction between being a soldier and, or, and a commander and being a worshiper. There's no contradiction. There's no a commander today who was as strategic militarily than David. And yet he was a leader in worship. I was so glad the other time in Nairobi, Kenya, and this man who, who was driving me from the hotel to the meeting of the church, and then he introduces himself to me. He's a surgeon in the Kenya Defense Forces, and he is excited to be, uh, to be my chauffeur, and uh, he is taking me to the church meeting. And he starts to tell me about how some in the Kenya Defense Forces, they are not just guarding the country with guns, but they are also guarding the country on the borders with prayer. I said, this is kingdom. 
That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. The, the men like the, the, the centurion who came to Jesus, he challenged every civilian uh, with the strength and audacity of his august faith. He says to Jesus, I'm not even worth that you would come to my residence uh, to, 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 to execute the healing of my servant. Just, I know your authority. You are a man of authority, you are son of God. I understand protocol, just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. We need soldiers, we need commanders, we need you know, heads of intelligence that are connected to God and they can be forensic in securing the borders of Africa. That is very, very critical. One of the greatest intelligence officials unremunerated in Israel was Elisha, the prophet. They, the, all enemies tried. They tried every trick under the sun uh, to, to, to break in and to compromise the future and custodianship and destiny of Israel. But Elisha always raised the signal, always raised the alarm, always informed the king before destruction would come. So we need these things. These rivers must flow out of God's house. Countries must not be destroyed by hurricanes and uh, monsoons and, uh, and, uh, and the cyclones and the tornadoes and uh, all kinds of things without, uh, without a plan and without knowledge and, and pandemics and the people just sink and capsize and they drown uh, like a carpenter fish. No, it, there must be a record that this one was born there. This one was born there. You see, both the singers and the players of instruments, they are in there. And all the springs of God, all the rivers of God, are you seeing the synergy? All the rivers of God of Genesis 2 must be brought back, the rivers that flow into, into every area of life, which means the Holy Spirit has to go everywhere. The Holy Spirit must be found in our airlines, in our aviation industries. The Holy Spirit must be found in our militaries, in our police forces. Police forces right now, it's dangerous to be a police officer today in any country because crime and criminals has become highly, these things have become highly demonic and highly satanic and so sophisticated. They are now cyber criminals and, uh, and, and, uh, and criminals empowered by drugs and drug addictions and so forth. The, the whole thing has, has gone occultic. Uh, in, and, and police are not trained for those kinds of things. We need people, police officers that come out of Zion. And uh, it, it can be written to say, this one was born there. This one was born there. They have got answers. They, 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 they know disaster. They can foretell disaster before it happens. They can foretell uh, dangerous accidents. We need engineers. Yes, we need programmers. We need developers of software that will develop software specifically to save and to preserve generations. We shall share more specifically tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to walk through all of Hebrews chapter 11. We just want to see the heroes of faith, the legends, how they executed the kingdom agenda one by one from the Old Testament to the New Testament advancing the kingdom practically in all the rivers. So the scripture says in Zion, the, the, in the tabernacle, in the royal priesthood, all the rivers, all the springs are there. Let no heart of the young people be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Christianity must not be relegated only to those who are about to die and they are crying to God to say, please save my soul, I'm about to die. No, Christianity must become a joy for the young people. Our best of the best brains, our best of the best scientists must love, our best of the best political and governmental leaders must love this God because all the springs, all the answers, all the infrastructure, it's, it's located there in God. And so we want to unlock these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not just a word. 
but it's a practicality, it's a demonstration. And so tonight, um, I uh, am kindly uh, bringing in uh, one of the young men, uh, Pastor Marshall, our eldest son in the family. So the young people must be able to articulate this. They must be able to carry this. They must be able to enjoy this right down to the kids, like Daniel, Shadrach, and his friends. They must play around kingdom issues, kingdom entertainment, recreation, the arts, and everything, music. And they must love this thing. And so uh, let's hear their expression. In the next few days, uh, next few slots, we'll be having some of these young people coming forth, expressing it from the way they are enjoying it, the way they are perceiving it, the way they are seeing it, and moving together. And so over to uh, Pastor uh, you know, Marshall, um, Chisangwe Narare, uh, over to you, sir, um, this evening uh, to take us through uh, destiny, custodianship, and the future of nations is in the hands of many of these young people. God bless you. Uh, over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, um, Apostle. Thank you for the... Uh, for the time and the opportunity to share um, some prayer points as well as to um, to share what is also on my heart uh, when we were speaking. Um, I am a, I'm one person who has got a heart for, for the youth as well. I'm one person who's got a heart for young people as I am one of them. Um, and uh, when you were speaking, I was uh, reflecting on my own country and my city, which is Harare in Zimbabwe, and the things that are happening uh, within uh, the locality of Harare, Zimbabwe. Um, can and we control some, uh, I think there's some echoes somewhere. Uh, uh, probably, yes. Okay, you may proceed. I think we have controlled some some mics there. All right, you thank you very much. Yes, uh, as I was saying, I was uh, reflecting on Arare Zimbabwe and the things that are happening around my community in Arare Zimbabwe. Um, we have spent uh, the past two years uh, in there, and I have not left since before COVID. And I've seen the deterioration that has been happening around, um, and especially looking at uh, the state of the young people in the backdrop on, of uh, COVID-19. There's been a lot that has been happening, um, an increase in drug abuse um, amongst the young people. Uh, there's also been an increase of um, a lot of young people who have backslidden. They have left the church. A lot of young people uh, are now experimenting with all sorts of things. There is now a, an enlightenment that is there amongst the young people. You find that the young people who spend the, most of their time on social media, cross-pollinating, getting ideas, getting baptized in all sorts of things that are happening, whether they are from India, whether they are from uh, any other places, they are experimenting with all sorts of things which they call spirituality. Um, and some of them are taking on, especially the young ladies, they are taking on uh, the mermaid spirits they are going into mermaid spirits uh, in order to get money, in order to get men that to um, uh, give them expensive gifts. Um, and they are pursuing knowledge, uh, which I would like to call the worship of reason, where they are arguing anything and everything that they've been taught, uh, especially from the background. Zimbabwe predominantly is a, known as a Christian nation or a nation which is predominant, uh, predominantly um, 
populated by people who profess that they go to church somewhere and they have received Christ at some point. However, we are seeing a reversal of this uh, within uh, the society in Harare, Zimbabwe. Now, I would like to, uh, to think that Harare, Zimbabwe is a sample of what is happening globally, because we are now in a global village where the young people are now connected uh, through social media. If you were to go on uh, places like uh, Instagram, on TikTok, if you were to go, uh, Facebook is now very old. It's now for old people. There's TikTok, there's Instagram, there's all these other social um, media places, even um, uh, on Twitter, there are rooms, chat rooms there, where they cross cross-pollinate all sorts of ideas, ideologies, even political ideology, business ideas. There is so much that is happening in those rooms, but there's very little of uh, the truth that is being shared in those places. Now you find that they are questioning and they are coming up uh, with, with questions that, will, that are basically poking uh, at uh, at, at Christianity, and they are poking holes in it, and they are going further to establish their own new things, their own new ideologies, and saying, some of them are now saying that all the gods are the same. They are all the same. And uh, they have basically backslidden. Now, we want to come before God, because if we do not pray, there's a generation for sure that is coming that does not know God. Um, there's a generation that is uh, being bred after this uh, pandemic that is questioning everything, every fundamental thing that has been put, every principle that has been put, they are questioning it. Now, this is not time to give the young people that uh, what we would like to say the old time religion. There's an old time religion where everyone was just hugging everyone and just saying God loves you, but not explaining and not uh, giving the truth, uh, the revelation, revelation and the truth of the word of God, which is basically the kingdom of God. Now, let us pray for ourselves that even as we are doing this reconstruction, we are not reconstructing the old thing. We are not reconstructing uh, altars and sacrificing of bulls. We are not reconstructing the law. We are not reconstructing church buildings and, and, and uniforms. We are not re reconstructing uh, nice Sunday hymns, but we are now going into strategic uh, offensive as, the, as kingdom people. Let's pray that God brings um, times of refreshing for his kingdom, for his people. Let's pray that uh, the people of faith will rise with solutions, that mm. there is a distinction uh, in yeah. the people of, of that, that know God. Let's mm. also pray that uh, the salt that is within us as the, as the people of God, it is restored. Because the Bible says, what use is salt if its saltness is lost? Yes, yes we are the salt and, we, and the light of the world. But let's pray for the Father to restore us. Let's pray for ref refreshing uh, even of leaders uh, in, uh, in, in society, godly leaders that are in society, that they may be able to bring godly solutions to the challenges that are there, because the challenges are real. There is prostitution, there's drug abuse, there's all sorts of things that's happening because of unemployment, because of idleness, because, just because of even mental issues that are happening. Young people are unemployed, they are just roaming about and they are frustrated. And uh, the church is just saying, Jesus, uh, just say Jesus, but they need practical solutions. So let's pray for that. Solution leaders, godly solution, solution leaders, that they may rise because this is the time for them. Anyone who will give a solution to the young people will win their hearts. 
May we come before God and pray for this. Amen. Let's unmute ourselves and proceed. Yes. Um, just pray in your corner. Yes. Father, we yes. bless Thank you. you. Thank you, our Thank you, Father. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you tonight. Come once again this evening. Thank you, Father. In the name of God, we have a strong hope. We believe in the rise of the eternal life ever after. Father, Lord, that you love the first and you never stop. Because Father, you love us, you gave yourself to us, and we died in the world, and our sins are dead. If it were not in his name, we are the sacrifice of his son, and we are before you now. Pray that they will the future generation the society in Jesus mighty name uh, so tonight we are so grateful. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much also, Pastor Marshall, uh, for um, just setting the trend there and laying that foundation with regards to um, what the implications are and what the meaning is for young people, the young generation, the youngest of the youngest. Um, these are real issues. These are authentic issues. These are, you see, if, 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 the, if the kingdom of God, if the church cannot make sense to the scientists, to the engineers, to the artists, to the, to the you know, all of these young people, um, then we may as well let the devil boast and uh, begin to say, all these are mine. They were given to me. They were delivered to me and I'll give them to whichever demon likes them uh, at any time. Uh, and we can't do that kind of betrayal. Uh, so this is why uh, the, 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 the last two verses of the scriptures in the Old Testament, Malachi 4, verse 5, verse 6, speaks of um, the spirit of Elijah. It speaks of the Elijah wave that is to come and uh, turn back the hearts of the fathers to the children and turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. And he says, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. 
So if there is this disconnect, if the present generation of leadership um, does not communicate and does not connect the young people uh, to a futuristic kingdom of God, saturated glorious faith where the kingdom, the power and the glory is the resident and where impact is better than where they are coming from then the earth is under a curse and there is no future for this generation. But God forbid, let every man be a liar and God be true. And so we are going to be hearing more um, of these for a few slots that will be coming. And may God touch our lives. May God speak to us and may God also release initiatives that will break the curse, will break the um, dispossession and disinheritance that is happening in Africa. The unemployment of the young people, the impoverishment, the disinheritance of the young people is unjustified. It's unjustified. Every continent that ever rose up to some form of respectability in this whole planet Earth, they rose on the back of what they got from Africa. How come? those that are in Africa, the same things, the same opportunities don't work for them. We must resolve that Goliath and we need ministries. This is why God is taking us out there. He's putting us out there with answers. So thank you so much. Uh, we are getting into week two, um, you know, yeah, week three tomorrow. Tonight we are winding up week two. And we are getting into week two tomorrow of the 10 weeks uh, comprising of 70 days. And so we are unlocking many more keys on the practical side um, of the reconstruction. And from the mountain of the Lord's house, answers, modules, blueprints must now begin to be distributed. Think tanks must now begin to emerge and the answers must begin to go out there um, to nations and uh, uh, rest, rest, rescue and restore back nations into their destiny. Uh, God richly uh, bless you uh, so much. I want to make sure if there's somebody who wants to introduce somebody or be introduced or introduce themselves in one, um, in a few seconds, just to unmute yourself. Let us know you are here for the first time, and then uh, we will be ready to log off. Uh, tomorrow morning, we are on. Um, another young person is coming on board, and uh, we want to hear it even from the young female people. And so tomorrow morning, we are on. Uh, Marshall, Pastor Marshall's wife, uh, uh, Pastor Rumbizai, uh, uh, is taking on, and uh, she will be uh, also bringing the further perspective and further dimension uh, of how this reconstruction applies to them and we'll be hearing more and more. We are going practical, we are going, we are going realistic, we are going deep. We are going to be hosting politicians, we are going to be hosting uh, researchers, we are going to be hosting Entrepreneurs will be hosting all, all streams, all rivers will flow to the mountain of the Lord's house, and they must go back answered um, and restored. Yeah, is there somebody you are to introduce someone or yourself? Please unmute yourself and just go ahead. God bless you.